Eileen Dabrowski has signature status with American Women Artists, the Pastel Society of America, and the American Impressionist Society. If you have ever wondered if what an impressionistic painting looks like, you need only to look no further than the works of Christine Dabrowski. Her work has been featured in magazines as American Artist, Pastel Journal, Plain Air, and Pratique des Arts, the French publication. The glow in her paintings is what draws me to Christine's unique way of looking at the world, whatever it is she's painting. And from Clarkdale, Arizona, I, um, or we bring you Christine Dabrowski for our demonstration. Hi, Christine. Hi there, thank you very much. I moved my um, uh, camera so you can't see me. It's more important that you see my hands and uh, what I'm going to be working on for you. So um, I don't know if you all saw the uh, photograph that I'll be using uh, today, um, but this is it. And whenever I work with a photograph, I know that I need to make some changes. Um, and so what I do is I work with a uh, sketch, um, a value study, and I approximate the uh, size and shape of the painting that I'm going to be doing. Um, in my photograph, I didn't like these two um, areas, so I combined them to one. Yeah. And um, it was also a little confusing as to the configuration of um, the plains and the hills here. I'm just going to tilt this down so you can see my whole painting. And maybe I should move it back a little bit. Just want to make sure you can see everything here. Okay, that looks a little better. Okay, um, and I'm eliminating this bottom area of the uh, grasses that really doesn't do anything. Actually, what it does do, it's a line of vegetation. So what that does is it would cut the viewer off from the rest of the uh, painting. So that's why I know that this part is just so very important. Also, uh, this reddish area is very close to the edge of the painting. So I'm going to be moving it over more into the body of the painting. The uh, subject of the painting is, we're just gonna move this back a second, a little more. Okay, that's a little better. Is the light that is uh, falling on this um, cliff. Uh, this is a scene up in uh, Utah. I spent a week painting up there a couple of weeks ago and it was absolutely glorious. Um, it was very, very windy. I have a lot of stories about that, including uh, my pastel box being broken, blown over. But um, anyway, that's what happens. So after I do my sketch, I uh, decide what kind of uh, surface I want to use. In this case, it's UART, which I've toned with a watered down acrylic because I don't like the really light buff color. And it's in kind of a number, which I like to work on quite a bit. And um, let's say I've got it on a uh, foam board and I start off by massing in my darks with uh, soft vine charcoal. I like working dry into dry, so that's why I use the charcoal. And I could go between really dark darks to more um, mid darks with the charcoal. The light lights won't have any charcoal down. I also like the fact that I can just hold the end of the stick and I could then get very nice graceful arm movements. I'm not starting out with something where I have to be right next to the uh, surface of the uh, paper. So I've done the massing in part already. It's actually kind of boring to watch that. So basically what I did was I um, got my sketch on the surface of the paper with uh, charcoal. And the whole time I'm thinking about my composition and um, 
the rhythms and the movements and where I want to put uh, things. So of course we work with uh, big shapes first. So I'm going to block in basically going um, with my lightest lights first. One of my lightest lights is the uh, sky area. So I'll just get that locked in. And one thing I liked about the uh, photo is that the sky is not really a clean, um, clear, uh, bluish color. And what I like about that is the sky is somewhat grayed, which should really make the colors of that cliff side pop. Now, another thing I know I needed to adjust is um, there's a brilliant orange for where the uh, sun is just hitting the top of this cliff. And the shadowed area almost seems to be about the same value. And we know that that would not be correct if uh, this is value and if this is where the, uh, if this is shadow and this is where the, uh, light is hitting. So I'm going to be using uh, slightly lighter colors in this sunstruck part of the painting, the paint, the part of the painting that is getting the direct light. So I'm yeah, using the side this of the pastel. And as far as what pastels I'm using, I can't, <laughs> I can't really tell you because at this point in time, um, I've developed uh, a touch that kind of compensates for the relative hardness or softness of the uh, pastel. So, but I use um, a lot of Terry Ludwigs, of course, Great Americans, uh, some Giraud's, uh, some blue herbs. I've been using those a little bit more lately and make sure I stand back. Okay, thank you. We don't want that. <laughs> you don't want to watch, be watching my hair. Is that better? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you for telling me. Okay, just blocking in, blocking in, and again, working with large shapes. What paper are you using, Christine? This is the UART, uh, which I have toned with a uh, light umber color. Thanks. You're welcome. How did yeah. you do it? Yes. How did you tone it? With a watered down acrylic. Sometimes I'll, um, you know, do a big uh, uh, wide uh, a covering of the uh, paper with a pastel and use uh, alcohol on it to tone the paper, but very often I'll use a uh, watered down acrylic. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is a nice rich dark greenish color for the um, junipers and the pinions. But it's a grayed green. I certainly don't want anything that would be uh, too vibrant as far as the greens go. And um, as I've been painting the Southwestern landscapes, I have found that um, the junipers are important in composing uh, the landscape because they can help articulate the particular plane that they happen to be on. Like later on, I'll be putting some up into uh, this area 
um, and they'll help describe edges and uh, cracks and fissures and so forth. So they, they help describe the uh, surface that they're on. They're not just wonderful little polka dots in the uh, southwestern landscape. Okay. Let's see. There is, let's see, that's going to be pink ish. There is bare earth here. And here. We always like to give the viewer some place to stand. There might be bits and pieces of it. Did somebody have a question? Is that a gray you're using? Yes, that's uh, that's actually a warm gray. And for this pinkish area. I'm going to put a gray down first so that it's not, it doesn't, I, I want this area to be quiet. The drama is up here. So um, I'm going, I put down this uh, gray, cool grade color so it will modify the pink-ish color that's going over it. Yeah, most painting um, is done with grayed colors. Or most kind of realistic landscape painting anyway. Okay, let's see. Okay, now I am going to, let's say, just get a little bit more of this green in with the masked junipers. Now I'm going to step back because that's something I always want to do quite often when I'm um, painting. <clears throat> Check my design and composition and so forth. What is the size of your format? This is a 12 by 16. Okay. Okay, I'm going to um, start to get into this area a little bit and start to um, uh, define things a little bit more. There's a um, dominant crevice right there. Let's see, I wanna make sure I don't paint it too dark. I think I mentioned I'm using a, um, an assortment of a lot of different kinds of uh, pastels. Over the years, I've uh, developed a touch to uh, compensate uh, for whether or not it's a harder pastel or a softer pastel. Touch is just so important in pastel painting. There's going to be a ledge here with some of the junipers on it. Okay, I'm 
going to um, step back. Now this, this is actually an interesting area um, because it's actually a recessed area and the sun is angled in such a way that it's just hitting right in there. This shadow over here is form shadow. It's actually part of the rock that is coming out. This right here. So that does have an edge right there. You know, living in um, the Sedona area, uh, I do get to paint a lot of rocks and it was a good thing I was somewhat familiar with the, the um, rendering of rocks and the way that they, um, uh, you know, go from one plane to another and turn and they have fissures and cracks, excuse me, I know my head is in the way. I needed to reach over and get a different pastel. So that prepared me for painting these rocks up in Utah. And at times it feels kind of like um, uh, doing a jigsaw puzzle. But it's fun, I enjoy that. So far, I have been using mostly Terry Ludwig pastels. Um, this one is a uh, Blue Earth. I don't know if you have ever used those pastels, but they're also very nice. Uh, they're small square sticks, but the colors are uh, really very nice. I like the way that they... Um, um, uh, put value sets together. I don't know if y'all are familiar with them, but um, it's kind of interesting the way that uh, the uh, sets and values um, are put together in the uh, boxes. Okay, I'd say now, um, so I'm just going to grab a soft brush. I see something that I don't think I'm going to like, so I'm going to move it. We have the luxury of doing that, don't we? something isn't going to work, we get to move it. What I didn't like is, is if you see this these, uh, little band of junipers right here, um, it's right at the edge of where there's the transition between the shadow and the light area. And I want to move it either up or down. I don't want the tangent of um, the junipers uh, right there. And I think I want more of a grade grayed greenish color for those junipers. But what they do is they describe the fact that there is a ledge right there. Another spot here where they can grab hold. There are other little spots over here where they can grab hold. And again, I do like to include those because they help to um, articulate the uh, planes that they're on. And there are some more right down in that little crevice. Now I notice that there's a slight color shift here. Um, that indicates that this, this um, part of the hill that's here, it's 
sandstone hill that turns in such a way that it's being affected by um, the cool colors of the uh, sky, the cool grade colors of the sky. Okay, now um, going to put some of the junipers up in here. And of course, because these are in the light area, they are going to have to be a much warmer color than the junipers that are down here. So far, I have been using a fairly uh, light touch. That's how I begin my pastels. I use a light touch for the early stages. And then as I progress where I need to, I'll use a heavier uh, application of the pastel. And there are some junipers up on the top here. What I like about junipers up on the top of a cliff um, base such as this is they help to soften that top edge. You don't have such a hard edge up against the uh, sky by including that vegetation. Okay, I'm going to step back. I'm not sure that I want so many of those. So I think uh, I'll take some of them out. I don't necessarily love that. Okay, this is a cooler gray, violet, blue. Okay. All right, when I put a uh, crevice in rock, <laughs> I'll use a darker color and put it down. And I will make sure that I bring some of the pastel over some of that um, that I've painted because the fissures and the crevices do not sit on top of the um, uh, surface of the rock. They are a depression. They, they sit down in. So that's why I paint them that way. They aren't lines that sit on top of the uh, structure on top of the rock. And let's say, even though um, it kind of stops here again, this is a problematic area. I want to continue it down into the uh, shadow area. Let's see, hunt and pet. That's always a part of uh, what we do, isn't it? Hunting and pecking for the right color. When I get done, I'll show you the palette of colors I've been using. I don't want it too dark. So you basically select your colors as you go along instead of having them selected to begin with? Yes, uh, no, ordinarily I do, yes. Uh -huh. 
And I keep my palette, um, you know, of course I keep the colors out that I'm using for the particular uh, painting. Of course, yeah. Well, yes, it was, uh, I learned that pretty quickly. <laughs> Okay, I like an, an old um, uh, oil painting brush for removing pastel. And I wanna share this with you. Um, I found the most wonderful eraser. It's called Moo. And uh, it's a plastic eraser. And this thing, will remove pastel right down to the surface. Of course, you have to use the brush to brush off the little uh, nibs and so forth that uh, you get from the uh, eraser, but this is the best thing I have found. They're available on Amazon and uh, they're made in Korea and they're called Moo. I share that with everybody these days because I tell you, they are just wonderful and um you know, we always we always uh need uh something that will uh, get us back to the surface right from time to time in our pastel paintings Okay, I still don't like the way that that crevice just stops. So I might get rid of that ledge altogether. There's a tangent there that just doesn't, just doesn't work. So I'm going to continue that particular fissure crevice, whatever you want to call it. Okay, I like that better. Did you, uh, yes? Did you say that you painted this previously plein air? Not this one, no, no. Oh. Because this is a light effect that would have lasted. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, 10 minutes. <laughs> At the most. And that, I sometimes do go out and try to catch um, um, the light at that time of day. If you remind me later on, I do have a painting I can show you where I did do it plan here with this kind of a light effect. But uh, sometimes it's good just to sit there and watch what happens as it's happening. Uh, you know, making note of the colors, making note of how the shadow creeps up a uh, cliff uh, face, uh, making note of uh, how the colors are also warm up here and they're getting cooled mm -hmm. off down here. You know, making all of those mental notes is never wasted time. Okay, all right. So let's see, I do want to get some more brilliant color in it, but again, it's just, you know, I remember watching it, it just was not this saturated orangey color. It was more, more like what I'm painting. You know, it's something that um, the phone camera does. So 
So I want some saturated color, but not quite. That overly saturated orangey. Do color. you take the same image and re do repeat paintings of it? I do sometimes. That's a great question. Yes. <laughs> Let me put it this way if I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this, you know, this, this is the, the beautiful drama that we all love to watch. So, yes. Yeah, so unfortunately, we get to see something like this just about every day. <laughs> I count our blessings. You know, whether it's in a park or, you know, the, the color that your trees change in your yard or whatever it is. It's always a blessing when we get to enjoy it every day. Okay, there I am, you know, uh, going back over that crevice to have it look more natural. Now this is actually a depression. So I want some more darks in there. Let's see, what dark? That's the question. Uh, I have my pastels spread out. So uh, let's see, maybe something. Maybe. I also think now that I have this in my hand, I also think this will be a good color for um, redefining some of the uh, junipers and pinions. Is that a blue earth? The, yes, this is. And you know what? I'll share this. Um, <laughs> it's upside down, but this is the um, portrait oh. sampler set. Uh huh. I'll show you the colors oh. because I thought that these would be just perfect for doing <laughs> southwestern landscapes. I don't pay any attention to what they're for. It's, you know, if the colors, if they're the colors that I think will work well and what I want to paint, I'll go for it. But this particular assortment was really terrific for um, painting southwestern um, things, subjects. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, let's see if I like that. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, anyway, uh, let's see. I'm using this, which is like a violet gray. Uh, and with the pinions and junipers in this area, because I definitely want all of these to sit in back of the ones that are moving forward. And I mentioned um, uh, reconfiguring um, the planes and so forth, because what I wanted to do was create movement in the foreground to gracefully uh, lead the viewer into the painting. Classic S shape going into the painting. Yes, I use S shapes quite a lot in my paintings. Hmm. I'm sure you're all familiar with, um, or maybe you're not, I'll mention it. Um, uh, the uh, John Carlson, uh, uh, not John Carlson, the Edgar Payne um, uh, landscape painting uh, classic. Um, composition and painting the uh, landscape. And in it, he, he um, comes up with um, classic um, compositional devices. And the S curve is one of them. There are many others. There's circular and steel yard and um, steel yard. I have no idea what is meant by steel yard. I just know it's uh, thinking about <laughs> See, so where, where that name comes from, I have no idea whatsoever. <laughs> I've always wondered that. Um, but anyway, that would be if you think of a um, 
uh, a balancing of a seesaw, you would have a large shape uh, closer to the middle, and then you put a smaller shape out to the edge. You think of people on a uh, seesaw. The very first time I went out to the Southwest, I was living in um, New York in the Hudson Valley, that's where I'm from. And I remember seeing a wonderful landscape, or wonderful landscapes, I should say. And um, I saw the wide open spaces with the uh, junipers and pinions on them. And I got so excited. And I thought to myself, oh goodness, the hills look like they have measles. <laughs> but I loved them. That was quite a long time ago. And I had no idea at that time that I'd end up living out here. Here I am. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So now I'm being a little more definite with these little, um, our little friends, <laughs> our little measles. Okay, and yeah, I'll go back in and um, work on the top also, of course. Oh, let's see, this is an area where there is some bare earth popping through. Okay, and let's see. I do want some light on the tops of some of those uh, forms, so. How are we doing time-wise? How much time do I have? You have as much time as you would like. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I won't, I won't pick away at this, but I'll get it to a point where um, it looks like something. How's that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I promise people, I won't pick away at it. Right. Most people do, but, uh, you know, kind of get to a point where they almost finish with it, but they won't to finish it up later and they'll send us a sample of the finished painting. Right, sure, I can do that. I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, because I'd want to take a look at it anyway. And if I make it, is, I'd let you guys know. Right. But you don't have to feel rushed that you have to finish. <laughs> okay, I was wondering how we're doing time-wise. This is, of course, being recorded, and we will have it on our website for people to come and look at it in a couple of months. It's on Vimo, and we have all of our past demonstrated uh, programs on there as well. Do you like that platform? Uh, yeah, the Nicholas. The it seems to work pretty well for for what we need to do or whatever. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah some people use the. Um, YouTube and yeah, uh -huh. some people use the Vimeo, but it works out well for you guys, huh? Yeah, that's, that's good to know. Jesus. Uh -huh. Good. Yeah, right now I'm um, defining the tops of some of, and I can see I made it, I did a no no. I don't like the way that these are all lined up <laughs> right there. So I'm going to get away from it and break that up. Yeah, I don't like that at all. So what I'll do is, let's say, I'll go back in with some of the dark. And I think 
Let's say I'll bring one down a little bit closer and make it bigger. That would be a good fix for that, I think. Let's see how that works. Let's see if that doesn't work out a little bit better. <clears throat> I'm always telling my students, um, oh, those things are pretty lined up. Those are all pretty even. So I just did what I always tell them not to. So we've got to fix that. Sometimes if I need to darken an area, redefine an area, maybe move around some of the pastel that I already have down, I am never averse to getting back in there with my um, charcoal, which is what I just reached for. It was handy. <laughs> And I knew that I wanted to um, darken this up a little bit. And it's not really adding a lot of charcoal. It's basically moving, moving uh, the dark pastel around that I already had down. So I'm never averse to my friend, the soft fine charcoal, never averse to using that if I need to. In the painting. Okay, all right, so let's see. Need a little more pastel here. Okay, now I want to um, get back up into um, the uh, top area gradually. Just want to do something here to define the top of this little uh, mound, I'll call it. And again, I combine those two shapes into one because I thought that this shape and then this shape was kind of awkward. And I'll put one little juniper right here, which immediately tells the viewer that this shape is behind this shape. Okay. All right. Okay, um, let's see, I definitely need some more pastel. Meaning a heavier application. In those areas and as I'm putting it down, I can reconfigure the edge of this massed um, swap of the junipers. They just grow pretty much where they want to, don't they? Okay, might be a little bit confusing yet uh, as far as the shape being in front of this one. So let's see. I need to go into my other box. I'm looking for 
Ah, oh, lightish, lavender color. I'm not sure, but Okay, I really like how that cooled this area down because basically this painting is about the contrast between warm and cool, the contrast between uh, light and shadow. Hmm. Okay, now I am applying the pastel a bit more heavily. I'm putting it on and I'm meaning it. Is this a color you've used previously? Yes, it is. And just by virtue of my applying it more heavily, uh -huh. looks like a different color. Yes. Uh, it's one of my teaching mantras is um, touch is so important in pastel painting. We pay a lot of money for our pastel sticks. We want to get as much use out of them in as many different ways as we can in developing the right touch is one of those ways. There's still a little bit of the uh, paper showing through in spots. But um, let's see, I, uh, when we get finished, um, I will show you a little more closely what that looks like. It, it's um, helping me with the uh, feeling of the uh, rough rock. I need to um, send this little piece to uh, Dakota <laughs> so I can have it match. It's uh, worn down to this little tiny nub, but it is just the, let's say it's just, where's my hand? It's just the perfect little, um, uh, it's the perfect color for uh, this. Yeah. Subjects like this. Do you know what brand it is? I don't. That's why I have to send it to oh. uh, Dakota. Wow. I have no idea. <laughs> I think it's a great American, but I'm not sure. Hi. Okay. Hey. 
there are a series of ledges up at the top of this. Christine, do you get to a point in your painting when you stop looking at your photograph and just let the painting speak to you? I sure do. I'm not sure if I'll get to that point this time, but yes, I sure do. That's a good point. Let's see. Um, I do want more brilliant color in this. Is that kind um, of your focal point? Right. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yep. You know, actually looking at it, it was one of those things that, you know, just makes you say, oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah, they're vibrant and intense for sure. Yes. You know, it makes you stop what you're doing. And... Well, actually, I was anticipating. <laughs> One evening um, during our trip, I wanted to I wanted to watch the sun creep up or the shadows creep up on this uh, cliff face just to see how how it happens and what colors were there. One of, my, one of my favorite quotes is from Yogi Berra. And he said, you can observe a lot just by watching. <laughs> and it's so true. I thought it was such an apt quote for artists. Okay, now I want to define these uh, junipers a little bit more now. Um, they need to have um, a much warmer light on them. And maybe I'll put, let's see, actually, I picked out this color, but I think that's going to be, I don't want to introduce green. So I've got kind of a, goldish color that I'll use. Let's pick out a few to get a little more definition to. Okay, I'm going to get away from it. These definitely need a little more definition. Mm. Yeah, that warmed those up quite a bit. This color, it's kind of like, a, a, I, I call it an amber green. It, it's a oh. very, very warm green-ish color. It's more, it's like a gold. Is that one of the colors in your box, sis? Um, actually, this is one that I made. Oh. Uh, what I do is I save bits and pieces of uh, pastel and um, I keep them in color families like blue, violet, greens, because I'm a landscape painter, I have a lot of greens and my warm colors. And then um, I reconstitute them with um, uh, distilled water. Yeah, I grind them up um, with the mortar and pestle, try to get them as fine as I can. And um, add some distilled water 
uh, to the consistency of Play-Doh and roll them out. And lately though, um, I have been deliberately um, mixing colors a little bit more. And this is a color that I use a lot. So it's a goldish uh, green. And I'll also uh, sacrifice some pastels in with the bits and pieces and crumbles uh, if I want to make a particular color. Okay, let's see. Um, walking over here to look for, um, I might not have what I'm looking for. But. Pardon my sniffing, the allergies are ever present, it seems. Okay, uh, let's see. Now, I want a transition color between this and this. And I'm thinking I might want a pink, no, that's a little too dark, a pinkish color. Let's see. Yes, I like that. Okay, I'm going to get a little more pastel in this area. Soften this transition. Maybe get a more of a transitional color between those two areas. And I'm thinking I want a light violet for to, between those two areas. I can't reach ordinarily. Um, well, a lot of times I'll keep my finger where I'm looking to place a color because how, how often does this happen? You want a particular color for a particular area and you're looking through all your hundreds of pastels and by the time 
Hey, you find that your pastel, you forgot where you're going to put it. <laughs> now, come on, I know you've all done that. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> okay. And let's see, maybe a little more warmth. I'm very close to saying I'm done with this thing. For now, let's put it that way. And yes, I promise. I promise I will um, do the finishing strokes and show you guys. Let's see, I'm stepping back. That would be super. Okay, yeah, I do need to... Um, fill in a little more um, in the foreground. Hmm. I, I picked an umber color. Uh, let's see, maybe something a little cool for back in here. Okay, I think I'm going to call that finished for now. Let's put it that way. Wonderful. So, before I leave, uh, I'll show you the palette of colors that I was using uh, for this piece. A lot of grays, a lot of gray violets. And um, what I'll do is I'll just tilt this forward so you can see. I can't see what you're seeing. So yeah. that's the group. And what I like to do is group the light, warm colors together um, as I work. Um, and I know that those are going to be the colors I'm using in my light struck areas. And the other colors are my midtones and my shadow areas as I work um, because light is one palette shadow is another palette so okay so um yeah i'll, I'll uh, finish this up and definitely send you um the okay. finished uh, piece and i'm gonna poke my head in here and so that i make sure to tell you that um, I really enjoy being here. There's, there's the famous here that gets in everything. <laughs> um, uh, and I appreciate your invitation. It's been a lot of fun. It's well, thank you very much. Most welcome. And thank you very, very much. You are very welcome. Wonderful job. Thank We've you. Just yes. gorgeous. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, it was great. Seeing everybody. <laughs> Christine, awesome. this is Nancy Hudson. Thanks, neighbor, for doing this demonstration. Oh, you're very I live welcome. in Cornville. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Howdy, neighbor. Are you living in New Mexico now? Pardon me? Are you living in New Mexico now? No, I'm in Cornville. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Welcome great. to your studio. Wonderful. Oh, yes. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, nice demo. Okay, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.